So my name is John Boyer. I'm happy to uh, have you here again for our, I think we said 20th um, uh, version of, of this meeting. You can see from the lineups to talk to the doctors, this is a, a vitally important topic to a lot of people and, and that's why we're here is to give you the information that you, that you need. Now the good news is um, that you have choices. We're gonna talk uh, a bit about the, uh, we're gonna touch on Dr. Luan's uh, topics, on Dr. Flaxel's topics. Uh, but you have choices for getting the most out of your vision. You have choices for how you function with your vision. You have choices for how well you do the things that you want to do and that you've been doing and that, and that you want to keep doing. Uh, so there are options for improving your uh, performance with your vision and we're going to talk about those. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you that uh, I don't have any conflict of interest regarding any of the products that you'll see in the uh, exhibit hall. If um, we, we want to tell you about them because they're available, we want you to investigate, uh, want you to meet with the vendors to, uh, regarding the products and have a chance to experience some of these yourselves to make, uh, uh, to make a decision for yourself. Now, uh, you heard all the names that you heard. Uh, some of them are hard to pronounce, uh, especially Dr. Flaxel's list of medications. And so it, it occurred to me this is kind of an alphabet soup uh, of, of information. And I was thinking, well, what if we went through the alphabet and just took 26 ideas that all relate to uh, macular degeneration. I think the list is obviously a lot longer than this, but th these are like the first 26 thoughts I had recently as I was thinking about today. So we start with A, and that uh, stands for advancements, and that's what we've been hearing all morning. There are advancements in the early detection of macular degeneration. One of the advancements uh, Dr. Luan talked about is optical coherence tomography and geography, or OCTA. And uh, it was developed in part, I would say in large part, by the researchers at the KCI Institute. And Dr. Luan made it very clear that the earlier we can uh, suspect or know for sure that there are uh, changes going on in the blood vessels uh, below the retina the earlier that we can potentially start treatment and uh, uh, you know prevent damage so we are grateful as Becky said we have reason to be grateful for these advancements that the researchers are are working feverishly to uh, come up with so B, B stands for better treatments. And again, uh, we've heard from Dr. Flaxel that we have, um, for the wet form of macular degeneration, she listed uh, three different types of anti-vascular endothelial growth factor or anti-VEGF medications. And she said, you know, that your doctor, if you have the wet form, and if it's appropriate to start uh, injections in your eye with one of these anti-VEGF um, uh, medications, start with one, they may switch you to another, they may switch you to a third drug, they may go back to the first, they, they titrate or they, they try to uh, monitor how your body's responding to the drug that's that's chosen. Um, so we're, it wasn't too long ago, we didn't have any of these, and then a little bit later we had one of them, now we have three. So there's, there's, it's really good news that we have these, and, if, if, and a lot of what Dr. Flexel said is, uh, and I, I counted about eight or 10 studies that she was um, referring to, they're looking at eye drops, they're looking at other injectable medications, they're looking at some of the oral medications, uh, like she said, for metformin. So um, there will be more choices for the doctors to offer to you if you develop the wet form. And, they're, and now, too, they're looking for uh, potential treatments for the dry form. 
So let's go on to letter C. C in the alphabet. C stands for community education. Uh, community education events such as this one, where you, you can really hear the truth about what's going on. Uh, what you hear on the evening news uh, is interesting, but it may not actually be uh, available. It may not be what it sounds like it is. And so uh, uh, you, you want to check with your doctor, and you, you can check with the doctors at the KCI Institute. Many of you are patients here. Uh, regarding the latest developments uh, all around macular degeneration. D stands for the, distributor, the dedicated distributors of the assistive technology. Uh, the distributors that we hear who are that we have here who are supporting this event. They're in the. We have two exhibit areas. If you haven't had a chance to see yet, um, if you go out the doors to your left and uh, right across the hallway, there's a large exhibit area with uh, many uh, vendors, and then also. Um, if you go out the doors and turn to your left, there's another exhibit area. So uh, both sides of the hallway here, you'll find um, products and services and programs uh, that are, can demonstrate to you methods that you might not, either methods or products that you uh, might not have thought of or you haven't heard of that could enhance uh, your daily functioning. E stands for e-readers, and some of you like to use these. Uh, the e-readers like the Samsung tablet reader, uh, iPads, the Kindle, the Nook. Uh, all of these devices can create very easy to see, high contrast, large print versions of your favorite reading materials. These have been a real blessing for people with, whose macula, whose fovea, as Dr. Luan mentioned, just if the print is too small or the print is too dull, they just can't make it out. And with, with one of these electronic devices uh, where you can read the newspaper and magazines and books, these, these have been a real gift to us. They weren't even really designed for us. They were designed for the rest of the world, but uh, will take advantage uh, of, of the technology that's out there. And of course, uh, with the e-readers, you can also have the device read to you. Uh, you can use voiceover and have it read to you. So these choices, I mean, right there, we've got four, and then we count the, uh, on this little tablet. Um, some people say, well, I just like to hold a book with real pages. I like to turn the, the real page, and I, I don't want to touch the screen. And uh, we have options for that too, and maybe we'll get to those as we go through the alphabet. So F stands for friendly voices. Now, hopefully the friendly voices are in your family or your neighborhood, but also uh, there are voices like Siri and Alexa and Cortana and Lyra. These are uh, robotic voices. These are computerized voices. Uh, that are on the iPhone, Siri is on the iPhone. I know a lot of you have the iPhone with Siri, um, and you have a relationship with Siri, good or bad. <laughs> uh, and Alexa, the, the whole group, the Amazon is offering Alexa, Microsoft on their products is offering Cortana, and then Leary on Android. And um, Th these are very handy if you want to learn how to, and you do have to establish a relationship of what you ask for, how you ask for it, uh, but it can be very, very helpful. Uh, uh, you might say, Alexa, do I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow? And she'll say, no, you know, your doctor's appointment is next Monday or whatever. Uh, or you say, Alexa, um, what's the weather going to be? this afternoon, or Alexa, uh, play Jimmy Dorsey uh, for me. Um, or Alexa, tell me a joke or something. And, and you have this, uh, good or bad, you have this voice in your house um, that can a, be a personal assistant. And yes, people without macular degeneration do use it, 
but uh, why don't we think about this and maybe have a chance you can go to the stores that have these community available products uh, and have them demonstrate it and, and give some thought and ask them, well, how could I use this in, in my lifestyle? So G stands for genetics, and, and I, uh, obviously we've been talking about genetics already this morning, but I want to I wanna point out to you that Dr. Michael Klein, who's here today, uh, Dr. Klein at the KCI Institute is a world leader in developing greater understanding of the genetics of all forms of macular degeneration to support the future development of a new way to prevent it from occurring in those people who are susceptible because of their uh, family history, genetic family history, uh, possibly a way to prevent it, and also to guide um, uh, treatments on, on people who do have it. So our genetic understanding is, is something we, we didn't have in the past, and due to Dr. Michael Klein and, and the colleagues that he works with around the world, uh, we, we know so much more, and, and we, it, it enables your doctors to give you a better sense of your risk of development and your risk of progression, and all of this, therefore, can be tailored to uh, your particular treatment or, or the monitoring schedule. H stands for headborne. Headborne vision amplification devices. Uh, such as, there are some products by the name of Jordy and New Eyes and Iris Vision. These are, I'll tell you what they are, they can help, uh, which you can see, by the way, in our exhibit hall. These are devices you can wear on your head, kind of like a goggle. They're, they're made up of a camera, a video camera, a digital video camera that looks out forward for you captures an image of what's in front of you, and then brings it up. You can magnify the image. You can bring it up closer to you to see what you normally couldn't see with your, with your eyes. Um, in the newspaper, I had a gentleman tell me here in the newspaper, there's been some um, talk about a device like this. It's a Canadian product. It's called the eSight. The eSight is not here. Uh, it comes from Canada. The Jordi, the New Eyes, and the Iris Vision come from the United States. And it's nice that there, that there are manufacturers who are coming up with com competitive products. It's kind of like a, appliances. Uh, all the, you know, you're getting an appliance, the different companies that make a given appliance, they compete with the other companies uh, to do the same job, uh, but give you more choices on you know, how you invest yourself, how you invest your money. But the Geordie and the New Eyes and the Iris Vision, you can see what these are like uh, in the exhibit hall uh, today. Now, I stands for identify, and there's another device that's here in the exhibit hall behind you, down the hallway and behind you. Uh, it's called the Orcam device. It's cut, it was developed in Israel uh, several years ago, it took many years for it to come across the ocean uh, and get to the United States, and it's been here now for a couple of years. And the, the OrCam uh, substitutes for your vision. It doesn't amplify your vision. It doesn't give you a large picture of what you're looking at. It doesn't have a video screen for you to look at. It is your eyes, and it attaches to your glasses, to the right side of your glasses, it's looking with its little camera. It's about the size of your little finger, attaches right to your glasses. It's a computer, it's a camera, it has a speaker, and it has a microphone. It will listen to you when you tell it certain things, and then it'll talk to you. And two of the things that it does is it can read print for you. If you have a menu, if you have uh, some mail, if you have a book, if you have a newspaper, you hold it up, you point at where you want the camera to look, it takes a picture of the print, and then it starts with a robotic voice, a computer voice. It reads what was on uh, that piece of paper, that menu or book or, or newspaper. 
The other thing that the OrCam can do is it can identify people's faces. So facial recognition software has been around for a long time. In other applications, uh, many people with macular degeneration say, I really have trouble recognizing faces of people where I live, um, uh, and I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed. I, I, don't, I don't know who they are. I have to wait for them to talk to me. And if I don't recognize them and I don't acknowledge them, they think I have you know, an attitude problem, and I don't want that. Well, with the OrCam, uh, it, you can teach the OrCam, I am told, uh, 150 faces. Uh, I can't remember 150 faces <laughs> with any teaching. Um, but so the OrCam is a remarkable device, and uh, you can have it demonstrated to you today. Um, if, and now, if you wanted to just read to you, it's about $2,500. If you wanted to read to you and tell you who just uh, came into the room, it's about 3,500. I think that's correct, but you need to check uh, in the exhibit hall. We, this is another choice we didn't have uh, just a couple of years ago. Jay, so I ran out of, I ran out of things. I said, just across the hallway. <laughs> you can see these things. I should have said just down the hallway is the bathroom, but. <laughs> and we can be grateful for that. So K, K is to know, K-N-O-W, did you know that closed CCTV, closed circuit TV video magnifiers were invented by Dr. Sam Janinsky at the RAND Corporation in San Francisco in 1968 and they have been used by people with macular degeneration to read books and newspapers for almost 50 years. If you're new to macular degeneration, uh, this is not new, and we've been treating it, and we've been making, we've been helping people have happier, better, more well-informed and educated lives well over 50 years, but with this particular technology, um, it's, it's still available. You'll see the modern version of the CCTVs in the exhibit halls today. We've gone from the big TVs like we used to have down to slim, where the, the TV monitor is a real slim, high-definition uh, monitor. But the camera basically works the same. You put the, the, op, the, the item you want to read uh, under the camera. The camera takes a picture, blows it up big on the screen, and you can make it big, big, big. You can make it as whatever you need in order to see it uh, comfortably, accurately, smoothly, and with speed. If we talk about transportation, L is for the lift, for the TriMet lift. In the, in the greater Portland area, the TriMet lift is an inexpensive door-to-door -door delivery service you can use uh, to go see your eye doctor and, and other things. Uh, you do have to, if you haven't uh, used the lift yet, I believe TriMet, I think TriMet is one of our um, participants here. Uh, you just have to make a reservation, I think 24 hours in advance, and they'll come, pick, come to your door and pick you up and take you uh, to your destination. Uh, it does take a little longer than the old days of getting in the car uh, and just going there. Uh, and you might have to, it, it might be quite a long uh, trip uh, to pick up other people and drop them off who are also using the lift, but still, uh, peace of mind, inexpensive, and um, you, just, you just call the program the day before. M is for motorized transportation may one day not require a driver's license <laughs> due to the availability of self-driving cars. I have mixed, <laughs> mixed feelings about what, the, what, what that's going to be like, but it is something that's being developed. It is. Be, I guess it's being used in some places. Uh, when, I, when I watch the drivers, the human drivers out there, I think, well, we couldn't possibly do worse. <laughs> uh, 
but and I think, well, who do you talk to if, the, if a self-driving car runs into you? I just, you know, a <laughs> lot of questions. Uh, but it is, and I guess there, if it's on the, if it's on the six o'clock news, whatever they say, uh, we, I don't have anything else to offer besides what they're offering there. So just, just, just watch for it. Uh, but meanwhile, there are, there are options with human drivers, and the TriMet Lift is one of them. Uh, and it would be for nutrition, and the ARIDS formula nutritional supplements have been found to prevent the development of wet macular degeneration in a clinically significant portion of patients who have certain types of uh, dry macular degeneration. And the ARID studies go back, I th it's more than 15 years, I think it must be 17 or 18 years, where they first started with the ARIDs, what would be the ARIDs 1. Um, and it really, really did make a difference um, in preventing a, some of the dry forms from converting, converting to wet. And as Dr. Lewan said, we want to keep you on the, on, on the dry pathway and not, not progress over to the wet pathway. Um, Dr. I think it was Dr. Flaxel who, who mentioned, uh, you know, not smoke, choosing not to smoke. I would also say don't chew um, tobacco. But, uh, and lifestyle change, something you can do something about. You can take the vitamins. You can also eat vegetables. And the lutein and the zeaxanthin that are in the arids too are also uh, in vegetables, bright colored, leafy, red, green, blue, darkly colored vegetables. The pigments in the vegetables that give them the color uh, are in the lutein and the zeaxanthin in, that's in the arids too. Uh, if you have trouble swallowing the arids too, you shouldn't have trouble swallowing the vegetables. <laughs> There's no excuse for not eating your vegetables. And so if you're, and, and the arids too study uh, was they looked at people and this is not a scientific description, but they looked at people the way I see it, who were meat and potatoes people who didn't have lutein and zeaxanthin in their diet because they, they hated vegetables. Then they had other people in the study who, who were vegetable eaters and even fish, fish eaters too, because the ARITS 2 study then, they had an arm of the study where they were looking at, at fish oil. And uh, my understanding is those who came in with low blood levels of lutein and zeaxanthin because they were meat and potatoes, when they took the ARITS2 vitamin, their blood levels came up, which is good because that means it was getting to the macula. And then those people who were already uh, avid uh, vegetarians, or, or they ate a lot of vegetables anyway, uh, when they took the, the ARITS2 vitamin, th their blood level didn't rise much because they're already at a high level. Um, so I, I just have to say that for you meat and potatoes guys, uh, just stop and uh, complaining and eat your vegetables. <laughs> o stands for the Oregon Commission for the Blind. They, they are not only a major sponsor of this event, but they are a major resource for Oregonians living with macular degeneration. And, and you don't have to be legally blind to benefit from the services from the Oregon Commission for the Blind. They have a large program uh, in their, in their, in, they have a, a large uh, division in their uh, program for people who have vision impairment from, not only from macular de degeneration, but other causes too. Um, and you do want to stop by their table if you haven't, and just talk to them about uh, how, how they might uh, be of service to you. And they do come to your home uh, to provide these services, and it's free. Now, here, P is for protection. We're going to talk about blue light here. We now have protection of the macula from exposure to ultraviolet and blue-violet radiation and damage to the eyes, to the macula, by way of wearing eyeglasses with advanced coatings on the lenses, and in some, some cases, 
within the lens itself that will block the harmful uh, ultraviolet radiation that can come from the sun and also blue-violet. Blue-violet radiation in the rainbow of colors uh, from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then ultraviolet. Ultraviolet's invisible, but just on the barely visible side of the uh, rainbow of colors is blue-violet. It is a very uh, high energy um, form of radiation. It can, uh, it can damage your fovea. It can damage those retinal, those vision cells that Dr. Luan showed on his slides. Ultraviolet can too, but blue-violet uh, can penetrate into your eye and over a time, it isn't like quickly, but over a long period of exposure, uh, it, it can be a further uh, cause of uh, damage to your macula. And we can block that from even getting in your eyes by something as simple as having the proper uh, blue-violet, and you always get the ultraviolet coating at the same time, uh, be put on your glasses. And you can ask your optician, your optometrist, your ophthalmologist who prescribes your glasses uh, uh, to tell you about it and to offer that, to have that put on, onto, your, onto your glasses. Now, the blue-violet radiation, uh, you'll, you'll hear that it's not just from the sun. If you use a smartphone or if you use one of these e-readers or you spend time on Facebook, on the computer, uh, if you're staring into these electronic screens, whether they're handheld or desktop or laptop, uh, some of these screens can emit this blue-violet radiation. Even some uh, uh, LED light bulbs can. And LED light bulbs are now replacing incandescent light bulbs. And, and we're being encouraged. In fact, we're being forced to buy them because they're not making the incandescence anymore. But the world is changing in terms of the environment. And the important part for us who are, and for you who are uh, interested in macular protection, uh, you're being exposed to the bad blue of the blue-violet uh, without your knowing if you're using some of these devices. So it is smart to, if you wear glasses, which I think most of you would be if uh, using these, these devices, uh, pre prevent that from uh, getting inside your eyes. Now, I said to the nice lady back there that there is good blue also, and blue, blue blockers, you've heard of, you may have heard of blue blockers, uh, glasses that are uh, yellow lenses, uh, possibly, or something that's what, what they just generally call the blue blockers. They're in the visible spectrum of light. Most of the blue is absolutely beneficial to your health. It's only, in fact, the, the blue turquoise in the spectrum, right next to the blue-violet, the blue-turquoise is coming up toward the green side of the rainbow. Uh, that absolutely helps you with your sleep cycle. It helps you with your body temperature regulation. It helps you with um, uh, some aspects of digestion. It helps you with maintaining your mood. And so there's a lot of good blue in the sun in sunlight and in other sources, and there is a, there is some bad blue too. So we don't want to just block all blue like all blue is bad. That's absolutely not correct. So we want to be smart about it, and we want to be informed about it, and ask the right thing and, and have the right thing done. So Q is for quality people like Becky Andrews, who herself has experienced life affected by changing vision. And she can testify to the healing power of an inquisitive mind in a willing attitude. It was just perfect. An inquisitive mind in a willing attitude. It doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, it doesn't hurt to consider things you've never considered before. And if you don't try something different, you're not going to get something different. And if you're, if you're having trouble uh, seeing your checkbook, writing on a straight line, reading your bills, reading the newspaper, doing various things, card playing. Uh, if you don't try something different, you won't get something different. But now you do have choices 
for all aspects of your life, everything you do that involves your vision, uh, if you're willing to uh, investigate and ask questions. R is for researchers. Researchers at the KCI Institute are obviously working on new ways to preserve vision that has been diagnosed in either wet or dry macular degeneration and other research to prevent the onset of macular degeneration in the first place. That should have been very clear from Dr. Flaxel's talk. If, you, if, if it's known that you have it, they're trying to protect what you have. If, it, if you don't have it, but there's some risk factors, they're trying to prevent it from occurring. So our, here at Casey and also around the world, uh, uh, researchers are working day and night to do something beneficial for you. Your part is to don't smoke, eat your vegetables, take your arid vitamins if you've been told to do so, and stay tuned and stay informed and keep, you know, keep attending uh, uh, events like this. Oh, by the way, I should say that uh, as Dr. Flaxa was talking, it was hard to keep track of all the studies that she mentioned. Well, you can receive for free twice a year the KCI Institute Macular Degeneration Center newsletter, which will give you an update every six months on current studies, studies that are open, studies that are enrolling, studies that are ongoing but closed, the results of past studies, and the anticipation of future studies. If you, if you and your doctor think you might, you or someone you know, uh, might possibly be a candidate to participate in one of these studies. So uh, you can sign up for, and you don't have to be a patient at the KCI Institute to receive this newsletter. You can sign up for it at the KCI Institute uh, table. Uh, I guess it was like the registration table out there. S stands for scanning devices. Scanning devices are now available that use optical character recognition or OCR software uh, to convert printed words into a computerized voice. Uh, thereby reading to you what is on the printed page. So OCR, optical character re recognition, is not, not a new technology, uh, but it's, it's now we're able to um, uh, use it for our benefit when reading of standard print or even reading of large print is just, and even reading under lots of magnification. Uh, can become so difficult that we lose pleasure reading. We can, um, uh, we can read, uh, we can stay informed on printed material by having a device that uh, reads it to us. T is for telescopic glasses. Telescopic glasses called bioptics are available that allow some people uh, to legally maintain their driver's license in Oregon and many other states. Um, if we're, so driving, obviously, it's a very important part of our, our lives for a lot of us. Um, and to maintain a driver's license, the DMV, who is here, the DMV is here. Uh, they have a table here. You can talk to them. Uh, the DMV doesn't set the standards for licensure. The legislature sets the standards. The DMV enforces the legislation. But uh, vision is one aspect of actually many physical and cognitive attributes that we have to maintain. Our bodies and our minds and our vision all, all have to meet a certain standard in order to maintain our license. Well, on the vision part, uh, there's always been the standard uh, qualification for vision, either day and night or day only. And now since uh, 2008, uh, there's been a, no, since 2004, I'm sorry, there's been another way to get a license if you cannot quite qualify for a daytime restricted license, but you have enough vision when it's looked at in entirety that with special glasses called bioptic telescopic glasses, it's possible uh, that uh, you could uh, regain or retain uh, your legal driving license. There are restrictions and you do have to see your eye doctor about that and this is something we we do quite often at the KCI Institute. U is for Uber. 
Uber and the other Lyft, L-Y-F-T, and traditional cabs and other ride-hailing services are readily available to make it easier to get where you want to go. I tell people there's, there's driving around and there's getting around. You can always get around. Uh, you don't have to drive around, and if, if it turns out that you're not going to be driving, you can always get where you want to go, and, and the competition for your business is wonderful. Uh, a lot of patients say, I don't want to bother my children, I don't want to bother my church members, I don't want to bother my neighbors, I don't want to impose upon them to take me somewhere. Um, but I'll tell you, you will make the day of the Uber driver if you call them, and they will you know, happily meet you at your front door uh, and, and bring you back. So, uh, and you can all remember, it, it hasn't been long that we've had these, these options. Uh, and we've always had traditional cabs, for sure, and we've always had the TriMet service here, in any way. But TriMet isn't every, everywhere in Oregon. And so uh, we have more options for freedom of mobility, freedom of movement, and getting about. V is for vision rehabilitation. Uh, and just like cardiac rehabilitation, if you've ever had a heart attack, or you've had cardiac surgery and you've gotten a new heart valve, or orthopedic rehabilitation, if you've gotten a new hip or a knee or other joint, uh, you go immediately into rehabilitation to get your speed up, get your functioning up, and get back to, to your life. Well, vision rehabilitation is just like that, and it applies to your vision when you're, and all your eye doctor, the eye doctor who's treating your macular degeneration uh, can refer you to vision rehabilitation if you're having difficulties of performing normal activities of daily living. W is for the Washington Department of Services for the Blind, or called DDSB. And for Washingtonians with macular degeneration, they are definitely a major resource. And like the Oregon Commission for the Blind, they too can come to your home and, and provide valuable assistance on uh, techniques of daily living for safety and for, uh, you know, for meal management, medication management, laundry and color identification of your clothing and just a, a lot of very helpful tips. So X, Y, and Z are coming up and then we're gonna, we're gonna uh, break for lunch. Putting an X on the calendar today will mark the day you begin your personal research to seek out all the ways to enhance the usefulness of your vision. In the end, it really does come down to you. The doctors can do all this marvelous work, and they can work, they can sweat and labor over finding, you know, new choices, but, but it, it is in your hands if you're going to seek what is available. You may, why is for you? You may have macular degeneration. It does not have you. You have control, and you do have choice on the effect that it might have. And then Z is for zero. There are zero excuses right now for not reaching out and investigating these available options so you can get the most out of your vision and enjoy, as Becky said, enjoy life to the fullest. In the handouts that are in the back of the room are the references for everything that I've mentioned. Um, and please take, they're in the back table back there along with Dr. Luan and Dr. Flaxel's talks. And I thank you for coming to our conference.